we're now going to pick up a thread from the last video and actually start saying how the notion of truth relative to things like both context and times is going to help us distinguish between um, in an hour's time on the one hand and right now on the other. I just want to reassure you here that what's important is not understanding absolutely all of the details of how the argument go. If you do, that's fantastic. But if not, don't worry. The important thing is just to take away the broader moral of why truth is relativized to several things. Um, because getting somewhat comfortable with that idea is going to help understanding better and understanding why McFarlane thinks he's making an advance with stating relativism in the way that he does. So at this point what's happened is we started with this notion of true to context and we saw it gets some things right. So for instance it can get right how phrases like right now pick out particular times. We saw that they're not shifty in some intuitive sense and that was captured by our original proposal. But our original proposal didn't capture how other words do seem to be shifty. So it didn't capture the shifty nature of things like in an hour's time. To try to fix this, we shifted to a notion of true at a time, and we saw that the situation got flipped. When we moved to true at a time, we were able to capture the shiftiness of things like in an hour's time, but we were no longer able to capture the lack of shiftiness in things like right now. The natural idea at this point, of course, is, well, maybe if we put these two things together, we can get both. If we put them together, we can somehow get the non-shiftiness of right now, and the shiftiness of in an hour's time. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to introduce this notion of true at a context and a time. And that's going to thereby give us the fact that some things are shifty and the fact that some things are not shifty. But before we do that, we need to take a step backwards and think about the bigger picture. Because without it, this idea of being true at a context and a particular time is not going to make a huge amount of sense to us. In particular, we're going to have to step back and think about the relationship between contexts in which we say sentences and the contents or in other words propositions that are thereby asserted. So if you remember the picture we had was something a bit like this. When you have a sentence like I am eating, well imagine that's said by me at 2 p.m. That determines a particular proposition. So we have this thing the character which is associated with a, with a given sentence and takes the context and gives you some sort of proposition it's spit out. And we said that, well, the character of I works by giving you a proposition where the person I refers to is, is whoever the speaker in the context is. So if I say the sentence, I am eating, the proposition I express is David Boylan is eating because I'm the person who said the sentence in that context. So we get from a context to a proposition and certain things are built into the proposition. So namely, the fact the proposition is about David Boylan, that's built in, and that's determined by the fact that I said the sentence. Now, the way we're going to think about propositions is we're going to say that, at least with certain propositions, it's not built into it the time at which we're supposed to evaluate it. So in the way we'll think about the proposition David Boylan is eating, that can be true or false at, at various times, depending on what's happening at that time. So we'll say the proposition David Boylan is eating, that's true at 2 p.m. if indeed I'm eating at 2 p.m. and it's going to be false at 2 p.m. if I'm not. So we'll imagine that at 2 p.m. I ate lunch, that means that the proposition is going to be true at 2 p.m. But the same proposition can be false at other times. So let's say that at 3 p.m. I'm in, instead I'm recording, I'm no longer eating, the proposition that was true earlier is going to be false later on. So because on the way we'll think about propositions like this, they don't have their times built into them. They're going to be true at some times and false at other times. Let's see sort of one more example of this. So let's imagine if instead I said at 2 p.m. I am eating in an hour's time. So now the proposition expressed is Dave Boylan is eating in an hour's time. So let's suppose I had lunch at 2, I recorded at 3, and then I have an early dinner at 4. The way we'll think about this sentence is, again, because of the way 
the word I works because of its character. A sentence like this, as said by me, is going to give you a proposition where I'm the person that's talking about. We'll say that a similar thing does not happen with time, at least at this point. So the proposition that we get out is the proposition that David Boylan is eating in an hour's time. And again, we'll imagine this is a proposition that's true at some times and not others. It's false at 2 p.m. because I'm not eating at hour, an hour's time. I'm not eating at 3 p.m. However, it's, it is true at 3 p.m. because I'm having the early dinner at 4. So again, we have a proposition that's true or false at different times, but it's a slightly different one. It's, di it's true or false at different times from just the proposition I am eating. Now, the crucial fact in both of these last two examples is that the time, unlike maybe, say, the speaker, is not built into the proposition. So the proposition we get out is a proposition whose truth value may be true or false at different times. And it's true or false at different times because it's not talking about a particular time. Whether it's true or false just depends on when you evaluate it. Or we might wonder whether maybe there are some expressions that build in the time into the content that gets output by the context. So maybe there are some, so maybe if, even if this doesn't happen all the time, there are some expressions such that when you say them, the proposition you express talks about a particular time. And in fact, that's exactly how we're going to think about right now. So let's say, change this to be thinking about I am eating right now. On the way we're going to think about it, this is going to output a very different kind of proposition. So before, as we said, the, the time of the proposition wasn't built into it. So for this reason, we just take the proposition, see whether it said what it says is true at a particular time, and that determines the proposition's truth value. We're going to imagine that right now, the way that 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 this is a context-sensitive phrase that kind of works a little bit like the way I does. So what it does is it gives you a proposition, in this case the proposition that David Boylan is eating at 2 p.m. because remember that's when I'm saying it. And so now the time is built in. So what this is going to mean is that whether this true proposition is true or false entirely depends on what's going on here. We never need to look at any of these other times. Whether this true proposition is true or false, it just depends on the facts about my eating at 2 p.m. And as we've set it up, I am indeed eating at 2 p.m. You can, in a sense, evaluate this at, at different times, but it's always going to send you back at the same time. So to evaluate whether this the proposition is true here, we just look here. To evaluate whether the proposition is here true here, again, we just look back here. And this is why it's going to have the feature that it's either true at, at it's either true at all times or false at all times because we always look back to the same point. Again, if I had evaluated this at 1 p.m., whether it was true at 1 p.m., I would figure that out by just going and looking at 2 p.m. So for that reason, once we build in the time, it's either going to be true at all times or false at all times because no matter what time we evaluate it, we always look at a particular time to figure out its truth. And this is exactly how we're going to capture this contrast in shiftiness and non-shiftiness. We're going to say that right now is context sensitive. In particular, it's context sensitive because it always picks out the time of the context and it builds that into the proposition you express. On the other hand, we'll say that phrases like in an hour's time work quite differently. In an hour's time is not context sensitive. Rather, what it says is just Whatever time you're evaluating the whole proposition, so to say that the whole proposition is in an hour's time p, evaluate p at an hour later than that. So let's start with the context sensitive one right now. We're going to say that right now p, a sentence of that form, is true at a context c and a time t, just in case the proposition at tc, namely at the time of the context p, is true at t. So remember, once you've built the time into the proposition, the t this sort of time becomes a bit redundant in some ways, because whether a proposition, whether the proposition at TCP is true at T, just entirely depends on what things are like at the time of the context. Let's think about a sentence of the form in an hour's time P. We're going to say that this is true at a context and at a time, just in case the proposition expressed by P in the context is true at an hour later than t. 
So you first see what proposition is expressed by P in the context, and then you evaluate that proposition at an hour later than the time you started with. So here the time is not redundant. We'll think that a Monday afternoon works the same way. So on Monday afternoon, P is true at a context and at a time, just in case whatever proposition is expressed by P in the context, C, is true on Monday afternoon. So you first say, well, what, what is expressed by this thing in our context? What proposition is that? Then you go and you evaluate that proposition on Monday afternoon. So let's go back to our picture of our situation earlier. And we're going to work through these examples for the final time and see how we're now getting both the things we wanted. So let's think first about the one we're now thinking of as context insensitive and involves this shifty phrase an hour later. So we're thinking about on Monday afternoon, John was going to eat lunch an hour later. We know now how to tell whether this is true at a context and a time on this theory. So let's imagine it's said on Tuesday at 2 p.m. So we're trying to figure out is this sentence as said on on Tuesday at 2 p.m. true on Tuesday at 2 p.m.? Is it true in the context it's said at the time it's said? Well, we can just work through it. So first of all, we have this expression on Monday afternoon. And we know that a sentence like on Monday afternoon, P, or this is the P, is true just in case the proposition expressed by this sentence is true at some point on Monday afternoon. So what proposition is expressed by this sentence? Well, it's a context insensitive sentence. There are no context sensitive words here. So it's just the proposition that John is going to eat lunch in an hour's time. So it's a proposition that's true at a time, just in case John eats lunch an hour later from that time. And we can now ask, is there a time on Monday at which this proposition is true? I.e., is there a time on Monday where an hour later John eats lunch? And again, the answer is the same as before. So we're imagining he eats lunch at 2. At 1 p.m. it's true that an hour later he will eat lunch. So the proposition, John is going to eat lunch an hour later, is true at 1 p.m., i.e. it's true at some time on Monday afternoon. So this whole sentence, as said on Tuesday at 2 p.m., is true at Tuesday at 2 p.m. because the proposition this expresses is true at some time on Monday afternoon. So the context sensitive sentence we had was that on Monday afternoon, John was going to eat what I am eating right now. So this clearly is a context sensitive sentence. Because we can see that there are two context sensitive expressions in it. There's I and there's right now. So what things these pick out is going to be dependent upon who's saying it. And again, well, let's imagine this is said by me on Tuesday at 2 p.m. And again, we'll say, as it happens, that I'm eating a cheese sandwich at 2 p.m. on Tuesday. So again, we've got to ask, well, is this sentence true in the context at which I uttered it on Tuesday at 2 p.m. at the time? at which I uttered it, namely Tuesday at 2 p.m. So to evaluate something like this, we know this is of the form on Monday afternoon P, or this is our P. And we know that that sentence is true at this context and time, just in case the embedded sentence, this is our P, the proposition expressed by that is true at this time. But what proposition is expressed here? This, con this is now a little bit more complicated because this is context sensitive. So we have two context sensitive words or expressions, I and right now. When it's said by me on Tuesday 2 p.m., we know the I refers to me. So we can just replace I with David Boylan. But we also know that right now is also, its reference is also fixed by the context. Since we're imagining the whole sentence is said at 2 p.m., then right now just picks out on Tuesday at 2 p.m. So the proposition that's expressed here is the proposition that John was going to eat what David Boylan is eating on Tuesday at 2 p.m. So in other words, this whole sentence is true, just in case on Monday afternoon, this proposition is true. 
sometime on Monday afternoon this proposition is true. Namely, that John was going to eat what David Boylan is eating on Tuesday at 2 p.m. So remember, this is the bit that corresponds to right now. And now it looks like we've got what we wanted to get. Because remember, we wanted to say that unlike in an hour's time, right now still refers to the time at which you say it, even when it's embedded under an expression like this. And this is exactly what we've managed to do. Since this says, look at the propositions expressed, and right now is context sensitive, and so directly talks about Tuesday at 2 p.m., this time is just gonna be built into the proposition. So we've now captured what we want. We've both got that some expressions are shifty in the way they pick out times, and others are non-shifty in the way they pick out times. In an hour's time was non-shifty because its reference is not fixed by the context. Its reference is just ultimately indirectly fixed by whatever time you're evaluating the whole thing at. So we saw that on Monday afternoon, John was going to eat lunch in an hour's time. It's true because well, you evaluate that proposition at some time in Monday afternoon, and the proposition that says John was going to eat lunch in an hour's time, well, that's true at a time, just in case John eats lunch an hour later. So, in effect, the time that in an hour later is talking about is fixed indirectly by Monday afternoon. On the other hand, the sentences involving right now work quite differently. The reference of right now is not fixed in this indirect way. Rather, it's fixed directly by the context. The phrase right now just picks out whatever time the sentence is set at, and it builds that into the proposition that's expressed. So a proposition like this, whatever the thing I'm eat, what we're talking about when we say the thing that I am eating right now, that just builds into the proposition that expresses that we're talking about the thing that David Boylan is eating on Tuesday at 2 p.m. So unlike in the other case, that here the time is built into the proposition and so it do and so we don't get this sort of shifting effect that we saw earlier on so remember we started all this because we want to motivate this idea i mentioned at the beginning that we need not just contexts but indexes as well indices we need truth in particular we need truth to be relative to both of these two things so now we have that truth is relative to two different things. So we have a true something is a sentence is true at a context and at a time. But it's worth being very clear that the way the context and the time work in figuring out whether a sentence is true work in very different ways. These do very different things in trying to figure out whether a sentence is true. Because the context bit essentially says the context bit says, well, you figure out whether a sentence is true by first looking at a particular proposition. What proposition? Well, the one the context sends you to. Once you have the proposition, you then see, is the proposition true at the time? We see whether the whole sentence is true at a context and a time by finding the proposition it expresses in that context and seeing whether it's true at the relevant time. So that's one important difference. Another thing that's kind of important to notice is what we might call the shiftiness of this time parameter. Because sometimes when we have expressions like in an hour's time or on Monday afternoon, they're true at a particular context and a time, just in case the proposition is expressed is true at some later time. So the function of some expressions is to change the time at which we're evaluating the proposition. We're not evaluating the proposition at the time of the whole sentence, we're evaluating it rather at some other time. So if it's an hour's time, it's an hour later from the time you started with. If it's on Monday afternoon, it's sometime on Monday afternoon. The time, in other words, can be shifted by the kinds of expressions that you're dealing with. This doesn't happen with the context. Notice there's no similar notion of the context being shifted. Because what happens is just the context tells you what proposition you're dealing with, and then it drops out. You just figure out from there whether the proposition is expressed. But none of these expressions work by shifting the context. Whenever the context occurs on the right-hand side of either of these claims, it's always the same context you started with. The context never gets shifted. 
And this, as we're going to understand it, is the crucial difference between the context parameter and the time index. So we're going to distinguish these by saying this is the context parameter and the time, this is an index. It's a feature of the index. And one thing that can happen with indices that cannot happen with the context parameter is that the index can be shifted. So, so far the only parameter we have in the index is time, but we've seen it can be shifted by things like an hour's time or a Monday afternoon. On the other hand, we have nothing that shifts the context parameter, and indeed we aren't going to ever have anything that shifts the context parameter, because that's not how the context parameter works. The job of the context parameter is just to tell you what proposition is expressed by this sentence, what proposition do you have to evaluate in order to evaluate the truth of this sentence? And then it's a story dropped out. I just want to finish up by giving you a quick illustration of the fact that even though all we've talked about so far in this video have been putting times in the index, other things will also have to go in the index, given a natural understanding of how we'll want certain expressions to work. So I said we would also think about modal expressions. So these are things like it's possible that, or it's necessary that, or necessarily, possibly, these kinds of expressions. We'll just focus on it's necessary for the moment. I won't give you a detailed argument because we've already seen a lot of argument already. But basically, a simplified version of the kind of theory of the meaning of expressions like it's necessary will look something like this in the kind of framework we've been using. We'll say it's necessary that P is true at a context C and at a world W, a possible world, remember we know what those are, just in case the proposition expressed by P in C is true at all worlds W. So this is sort of natural way of thinking about what it means to say that something is necessary. For instance, it's necessary that 2 plus 2 equals 4, that's true at a context on a world, just in case the proposition expressed by the sentence 2 plus 2 equals 4 is true at all worlds. So this definition of what it means to say that something is necessary uses a notion of truth relative to a context and a world. And here worlds seem to work quite similarly to how times worked. To see whether the original sentence is true at a particular world, you figure out, well, what proposition is expressed by the sentence, and you check whether that proposition is true or false at a particular other set of worlds. Well, in this case, namely all of them. So we get a similar sort of shiftiness with the world parameter as we did when we earlier when we had a time parameter. For this reason, when we want to add worlds, we're not going to get we're not going to get too much into the details of it, but when we want to add worlds and when we want to do both modal expressions and temporal expressions together, we're going to have three things that truth is relative to. We're going to have truth is relative to a context, it's going to be relative to a world, and it's going to be relative to a time. But the behavior of some of the parameters is going to be very unlike the behavior of the others. Like we said before, the context parameter isn't going to have this shiftiness. It just determines what's said, it helps you determine the proposition you're interested in, and then it drops out. You then use what's left over, namely the world and the time, to figure out whether that proposition is true or not. So this ultimately is this distinction between the context and the index that we mentioned at the beginning. We have to say that truth is relative to a bunch of different things in order to give theories of meanings for things like temporal expressions and modal expressions while also respecting context sensitivity. But some of the things that truth is relative to behave differently from the other things. So we saw that the context parameter differs in how it behaves from the world parameter and the time parameter, and for this reason we make a distinction between the two kinds. The context is the only one of its kind, so we just call it the context parameter, and we call everything else uh, the index.